Hi, good morning. This is David Rizzo with Rogers Gardens. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to grow a few varieties of vegetables today. Okay, so the first one I'm going to be talking about is squash. And there's different types of squash. I break them into two groups, bush varieties and vining varieties. And so the bush varieties are some of like your zucchini and your patty pans and some of those. And so one of, one of the ones I really like, my favorite, I like these, the, the zucchini, the ball zucchini. This is a good one. This is a green zucchini. So I really like that one. Um, when I am growing them, I want to give them a little room because zucchinis can get very large. So one plant can get about three by three. So I'll give them a little bit of room when you plant them. So a lot of times, put it right here and then I'll put another one about two to three feet away and so that's with the, the green zucchinis and they're good there's gold zucchinis too you have some of the gold ones that's what seeds I brought up let's see the seeds I brought up okay we have some of the there goes a good one too you have the um, butternut squash so these are runners you can actually plant from seeds or plants zucchinis and squash produce in about 40 to 60 days so they're fast producers one of the most important things too, when you are growing either one of these, they get full sun, six to eight hours, and they need a lot of water. So when you first put them in, you'll be watering them three to four days a week. So a good amount of water. And when you're doing seeds, they germinate very, very fast. So we're talking, oh, they'll germinate in five to six days right now with the warm weather. So seeds or plants, it doesn't matter. Both of them can go into the ground. Um, and there's other varieties too that I didn't bring up like you have crookneck. Crookneck is another really good one that's more of a vining type. Um, if there's three plants in here, sometimes I can actually separate them if they're young. So I can take these out and actually gently separate them. And then see, I have three different plants. So see these three different plants, let's loosen that. Then I can plant them farther apart like this. And so, but what I'm always wanting to do too, when I'm planting these, I tend to plant them a little deeper. So if you guys can see that, a little bit deeper. And these are these have really good roots. Just make sure you water them good. So those are the crookneck squash. And so those are easy to separate. And um, I didn't bring up any spaghetti squash, but there's spaghetti squash you can grow. There's patty pans, there's yellows, there's greens, a lot of different varieties of those. So those are zucchinis. And so next on the list, peppers. I'm gonna talk a little bit about peppers. So peppers, you have a lot of peppers. And so these are jalapenos. This is a nice one gallon plant. These are starting to set. As it gets hotter, they're really gonna start setting good. So that's the peppers. Peppers fall into two categories, hot peppers and sweet peppers. So your bells are like your sweet peppers, your banana peppers are sweet. Your, um, your Anaheim chilies aren't that hot, they're more mild. Then you go into your hot peppers, like your habaneros and your Carolina reapers and your serranos and all those. So different in terms of hot peppers, sweet peppers. And so some of the ones I brought up, let's see. Let's see, some of, some of my favorites. I really like, if I can get this tag off, I'll just go. I like Anaheims. Anaheims are one of my favorites. This is a mild chili. So I love using the Anaheims for cooking and for salsas. I like the hatch peppers too, and I just broke the head off it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the, I like the hatch. Another chili. Um, uh, so you got like the poblano anchos. So poblano anchos are really good. Now this is your chili rellenos or your stuffing pepper. I love using these. I love to roast them and then I, I pack cheese in them. So this is a good one. I like those. So what other other peppers do I have? So the main thing when I'm growing peppers, I can crowd them a little bit closer. So I can plant them a little bit closer. I can put them about, well, when I'm planting them, I'll put one right here and maybe the other one about 16, 17 inches away from each other. Uh, peppers tend to grow straight up, so they don't really crowd each other out that much. Um, making sure you feed them though. Peppers are heavy feeders. I really do like to get them, plant them small. And now's the time to plant them. You know, we're hot in the afternoon. We got some good hot nights. So they're gonna take off and really set their flowers and grow in the next six to 10 weeks. So very important to plant them, timing with them, but nice starts, they're young. 
Um, sometimes when they're really new, sometimes I will sort of pick off some of the flowers on them because I want them to grow. And even when I'm planting them, I'm notorious for taking the bottom of the roof wall and literally just peeling that off. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll sort of butterfly the roots. And that allows all the new roots in here to start coming out so they're not root down. And uh, plant them at level, you know, plant them level when you're planting them. Um, and again, when you first plant them, make sure you water them. When I first plant these, I'll be watering these about four times a week. Um, once they get established after a week to two weeks, then I'm backing off to about twice a week. David, we have a question from Sarah. She, okay. she wanted to know, uh, let's see. Um, what did she want to know? Oh, what does it mean by set? So you talked about peppers starting to set. She wanted to know what that meant. Um, Sarah, so what I mean by when I say setting, that means when the flower, actually the pollen from the other flowers set into a fruit. So you could probably see it on these bigger, on these bigger uh, peppers right here. So you see the flowers right here. Now, now they're air pollinated, so the pollen goes from flower to flower. So this is the flower, but when it sets, if you pull off this little flower, I don't, it's hard to probably see, but can you see the little fruit that set? So it's mainly, I'm just saying that it's going from a flower that's getting pollinated and setting into a fruit. And so back to peppers, um, peppers are pretty easy to grow as long as they get full sun. And uh, sometimes I do watch when I'm planting them that, that stuff doesn't overcrowd them or, or shade them out. So I'll push tomatoes back. I want to make sure that the peppers get a lot of sun. So very important. Um, insect problems, not a big insect problem uh, plant, but if they get snails, I'll use like a Sluggo Plus or something like that, you know? So yeah, so, but that's peppers. Plant them, give them a little spacing. And then moving on to the next thing, going to talk about cucumbers and so cucumbers are one of my favorites I love finding cucumbers cucumbers are very very fast growers um, some of them you have to train up like some of the Japanese cucumbers you have to train because they, they're climbers a lot of the other cucumbers I just let them ramble on the ground or if you plant them near your raised bed they can trail out of your raised bed this is a variety called um, salt and pepper so salt and pepper is going to be more of like a pickling cucumber so pickling cucumbers um, are a little harder, so when you brine them and, you, and, and you're, you're pickling them, they don't fall apart. So a little different than the regular cucumbers. So that's your salt and pepper. That's a good one. Uh, let's see if we brought, we brought up a really good one that I like too. It's called Sweet Success. So Sweet Success is a good slicer. Um, and then with, um, there's Persian cucumbers. There are so many different varieties. Let me see, oh, these are really good too. These are Armenian cucumbers. Oh, you have another question? Yeah, we have a question. What is the best thing to use when you do get insects on your vegetables, in your opinion? Well, like the, the question is what to use when you start to encounter insects. I don't really spray a lot or use a lot of um, organic insecticides until I really see a problem. And some problems can be very specific. Like peppers can get snails. I'll use like for organic sluggo. Um, and that's a bait that you put around the plants that's safe, uh, that's safe to use. Um, for aphids, for white fly, I'll use some of the organic soap sprays. If you have a problem with caterpillars, um, I do use BT or Bactylus genus, and that, that's from Safer. So, you know, but I really spray, I always keep an eye on them. If the leaves look good and you're watering and you're feeding them and they're growing, that's the best way to fight off insects is keep healthy plants, keep them growing. You know, that's the best thing to do. You know, that's why a lot of times when I, I'll talk at the end more about fertilizing, but I always feed really good and put my compost in really good. So even with the Malibu, I love to top dress it, you know, cause they get the nutrients and that's important for uh, plants growing. So back to cucumbers. So um, there's some other good ones too. Oh, here goes another one called homemade pickles. So homemade pickles is a really good one. That's a good, that's a good pickling cucumber. Um, we, we have, we had Persian cucumbers somewhere, and Persian cucumbers are really, really good. They, um, they're the little tiny cucumbers that are really sweet, that slice good. Um, I guess with cucumbers, with anything, you can find them for their part because they do ramble. So like even this sweet success and this homemade pickles, 
I can put one over here, I can put one over here. Now these are gonna trail around and this one plant might get about three to four feet wide. So that's the one thing with this is uh, give them a little room or put them on the ed edges of your raised bed. Um, really crucial in watering too with these. Um, you wanna make sure when you first put them in, you're probably watering again about four or five times a week. And as they get established, backing off to two to three times a week. And um, I always like to make sure that that they're flowering a lot so I'll use my fertilizer when I first go and plant them and feed them really good like I use the bio the bio life has been a good one lately I like this one because it has a little bit more mycorrhizae in it so it's a little bit more active so it gets a lot of the microorganisms activating and really making that soil alive and so that's with the cucumbers and if they do start to get powdery mildew like we're in the season of the mildew did you have a question or no Okay, we're in the season of, of when we have these gloomy mornings and the, the party mildew starts showing up. If you start to see like mildew on your, your zucchinis or your cucumbers, this looks like white powder. There's an organic spray that I use that's actually a rose spray called Rose 3-in-1 by Safer Products. It has sulfur in it. Sometimes you can catch the mildew from spreading a lot. So watch for mildew um, with these damp mornings and if the mildew gets really bad, sometimes I'll try picking off the leaves, but if it gets really bad, I'll yank the plant out and put a new plant in, because mildew is hard to control. Yeah. And then next thing we're gonna be going over is strawberries. So strawberries, there's there's two classifications of strawberries. There's June bearing and then there's ever bearing. I love, I love all strawberries. You can get a good mixture of harvesting. So the June bearing varieties are like the sequoias, and, and they produce in June. Most strawberries are what they call um, day length sensitive. So some varieties, as the days get longer, which are the June berries, they'll stop bearing. The ever bearing varieties, it doesn't matter how, how long the days go. So as we go longer into, into summer, the June bearing varieties stop. That's why I like a lot of the ever bearing types because they'll go all the way into summer. You might get another crop in fall. And so some of these, that I like. Um, this is one is Seascape. Seascape is a really good one. Um, this is a good everbearing type. This has always been one of my favorite varieties to grow. Um, you get you get a nice plant with leaves. Uh, I always take them out again with these. I'm always loosening it up the bottom of a root ball. I'm always and the one thing with strawberries that's really important that I'll show you guys is when you do plant, don't bury that crown. So see where the crown is? I'm gonna keep that crown, I'm gonna keep the soil off the crown. See, if I bury it all the way up to here, I'm gonna cover that crown and rot the plant out. That's where your new growth comes from. And if they start producing runners, um, then I will go actually and pick them off. And I even pick off leaves that don't look that good. And then you got a nice little start with a good crown and you're gonna plant them. And when I do plant them, I like to plant them pretty close. You know, I'll put strawberries about 10 to 12 inches apart. Sometimes I'll stagger the row, um, make sure they get enough water, and make sure they, they're getting probably about a couple times a week because strawberries do take a good amount of water. Feeding, I really go through and I'll feed about every six to eight weeks. Strawberries are a little bit heavier feeders than that. There's another question? Okay, okay. So rounding this up, so strawberries are good. We went over a few things. We went over your zucchini, we went over your peppers. Um, beans are the next thing. So there's, a, there's two different types of beans when you go into the categories. So the beans, beans fall into bush beans, they fall into climbing beans. There's a lot of variations even in those two groups. And so I have some seeds right here. These are, these are a mixture of yellow, purple, and green, and this is called trio. I like the bush beans, because the bush beans, they don't vine, they'll bush about 14 to 16 inches. And if you look on the back, this is botanical interest seeds. Let me hold that so you guys can see it. Uh, let's see what variety is it that says in here. Does it say? No, it just says that they're snap beans, which is the, the, the string beans. Okay, here we go. So these are heirloom varieties. You have uh, Cherokee wax, which is the yellow. You got purple queen. And then you have one of the other ones, Blue Lake. So Blue Lake is actually a hybrid. But all three of them are good bush beans. So when I'm actually, I'll open up the pack and I'll show you the seeds. So you got a mixture and see how, 
some of the different colored seeds are different. Like purple is gonna be the purple, the brown is probably gonna be the gold, and the white's gonna be the green. But I always will plant about two seeds in each area, and I do space them pretty close. I'll plant them about four to six inches apart. So I'll plant them about two inches deep, about four to six inches apart, and uh, put them down about an inch. So when I'm planting, I make a little hole with my finger, mm -hmm. plant two, three seeds in each little hole, and the crucial thing about doing them from seeds is making sure that you really water them. So I might be watering them about three to four times a week um, until they really go through and start germinating. But I'm always watching for as they start to emerge from the soil and they start germinating, then I'll back off to like two to three times a week. So water really heavy until they germinate. And, um, and then when they start coming up, I start backing off. And so there were some other ones I brought up. This one is called Contender. Another good good bush variety. Um, what else do we have in the seeds? Um, you do have the French filet beans. The one thing I really like about the French filet beans, this is a variety called Maxibel, um, and this is a um, bush variety too. The difference, I guess, between French filet beans and regular string beans. These are very skinny and very tender. So you do pick them young, and you really do harvest quite a few of them. So the the French fillets are really skinny. There's a number of different varieties. There's Rolandi, there's a really good variety that's called Emery Wright. Emery Wrights are gonna be more pole beans. So some people will take like a trellis or some stakes and they'll run them up the trellises. I always put three to four seeds at the bottom of each stake when I am planting a trellis or, or a teepee. And so, but these are Maxibels. This is a good seed company I like too. Southern Exposure Seeds. And so, yeah, yeah, and so. And with that, even there's a few plants. So this is Blue Lake. This is a this is a bush. Did you guys have a question? Okay. So going over the beans. So that's pretty good with the beans. Um, so thank you for joining me today. This is David Rizzo from Rogers Gardens. And, and join us next tomorrow. We're doing another one. And let's walk over. And I want to show you some of the zucchini, strawberries, and beans in my garden, okay? So the first thing, look at the, these are, these are really nice right here. These are a purple, these are purple French filet bean called Royal Velour. And so look at these, these are ready to harvest. When you do, what I do is I hold, when I harvest these, I hold the little neck and I just pull them. I pull them and I pull them. The reason why I do that is if I keep on harvesting, the beans are gonna keep on flowering, I'll get more production. And moving down the line, this is a little zucchini, and let's see if we can get in there. This is a little zucchini that's a Mexican zucchini. Wow, these really set a lot. You can tell though, let me pull one off, you can really tell when they don't set. So when you're looking at this fruit, it didn't set. So let's see if I can find, like, because you have, okay, here you go right here. Let's pull this off and I'll show you guys really quick. So what happens, this is a male flower, no fruit behind it, this is a female flower. They actually need to set, I'm gonna pull this off, so they need to pollinate each other and they need to set, you know, this has to pollinate. If you don't pollinate, then you'll see the fruit actually shriveling up and, and uh, rotting out. So this fruit didn't set. So you'll always see that. It's good to try to bring in the bees too, if you put little flowers like marigolds around them. So I know with these, they're nice and smooth. These actually set, but there's a few down here that didn't set. And what I'll do is I'll just pick them off, you know, cause they won't, they won't do anything. So just pick them off. So I can tell with these nice and smooth that they set. Uh, you have strawberries too. I'm gonna set these down. Look at the strawberries. The strawberries like are starting to really fruit. This I think this variety is called Chandler. I think this is Chandler. So they're really starting to set. I'm a cleaner though. When I when I actually uh, go through and I'll start cleaning all this up and pulling off the dead leaves and all of that. So thank you for joining me today. This is David Rizzo from Rogers Gardens. Happy gardening.